Hi everybody. So we have this lecture recorded because we're not meeting in person today, Friday, January 27th. Uh, this is class number eight. Just to begin with some announcements, remember that on Monday I'm going to be going around the class and checking to see if you are taking adequate notes and have access to the syllabus and schedule, whether you've got all your previous homework assignments. And so I think for most of you what that means is keeping a three ring binder that has those materials printed out and available. Uh, I think there maybe are a couple of you who prefer to take everything electronically and so that's fine as well. So just please have that ready on Monday. Remember that it counts as 2% of your final grade and this is going to be the first of two checks that I do. Homework number three is available now on Blackboard. It has um, the three reservoirs problems. There are three, three reservoirs problems. And um, Two, the first two are related to the Darcy-Wiesbach equation. The third one is the Hazen-Williams equation, which you're going to uh, write the question for. And so that assignment is due on Wednesday. It needs to be uploaded to Blackboard before class. And since you'll likely be using Microsoft Excel for at least the first two, then uh, include your Excel file. And if you do any hand calculations, then also turn that into a PDF. So today what I'm going to be doing is telling you a little bit about the fully turbulent flow assumption and how that can improve and streamline our initial estimate of the Darcy-Wiesbach friction factor F. And then I'm going to go through the second Darcy-Wiesbach equation based three reservoirs example problem. So remember that there's a template file on Blackboard where you can get a blank spreadsheet and so I'm going to be working through the second of those two example problems in today's lecture. Now before all that, I just wanted to draw your attention to the application deadline for the DOH summer co-op program. Uh, they're going to be accepting applications up until 4 o'clock on Friday, February 10th. And um, I think that probably many of you are already familiar with that program. They've got positions spread out all across the state in each of the district offices and there's quite a lot of opportunity in Charleston. Um, the eligibility criteria is that you have to have a valid driver's license, have at least 30 credit hours, and so that would be everybody in our hydraulics class, and then a GPA of two or better. So I think this is a great opportunity to get some practical experience to see what real world engineering is all about, maybe spend some time outdoors during the summer. So um, you really should consider that opportunity, and I'll send out the application via email. You can also just find it online by Googling DOH Summer Co-op Program. So please note that deadline. All right. Now, the fully turbulent flow assumption. A lot of our problems so far, we've just been starting our iterations with a guess of the F value. But we can do better than that. And the reason why is we can assume that the water is flowing at a relatively fast velocity through some conduit. And if it is, then what that would mean is that we have a relatively large Reynolds number. Now consider the Jane equation. And in the denominator there, there's two terms which dictate the friction factor. On the left-hand side is the term which is related to relative roughness. And so remember that K sub S is an estimate of the equivalent sand roughness of a pipe. And so it's related to the material properties. And then, of course, D is the diameter of the pipe. And so this first term is just really about how rough the pipe is relative to the diameter of the conduit that the flow is going through. But the second term in the Jane equation denominator is about effectively the, the speed that the water is traveling through the conduit. And so if you have a high flow velocity, that would give you a big Reynolds number. And since this Reynolds number is in the denominator of that second term, a big Reynolds number would mean that that second term effectively goes to zero, or at least it's negligible compared to the relative roughness term. So rather than just starting with an F value of, say, 0 .008, which I've done on a couple of previous examples, we could get a better first guess of our F value by just assuming that the flow is fully turbulent and calculating F based on 
just this k sub s to d term included. So it's still the 1.325 divided by and then you know this term squared and the logarithm and all that. It's just we ignore the second part of what's in the brackets there just as our initial guess. And then once we have our initial guess and we go through the iteration process we'll have a flow velocity that we can then put into the Reynolds number. So it's just something that you would invoke during a first iteration and then later on you'd check that assumption or you'd improve upon it. Now to go back to the Moody diagram, remember that there's two general zones of the Moody diagram. To the right of that dashed line is where the curves are relatively flat and that is that fully turbulent zone that I'm speaking of where it doesn't matter necessarily what the Reynolds number is just so long as it's big then the F value isn't changing. But what the F value does depend on is these values on the right side vertical axis, so the relative roughness. So we could just say as long as we've got some threshold Reynolds number that's been met, then the F value over here on the left vertical axis only depends on the relative roughness. So just to conclude, this is a way of estimating F that's better than simply choosing some number at random. So we may have to improve on that guess, but it's better than some F value pulled from thin air. And oftentimes our iterations will converge quickly, but sometimes we have procedures. Um, we'll be doing something called the, the Hardy Cross method. And there's if there's a lot of pipes in a network, then the uh, Calculations won't converge as quickly if we've just started with some random value. It's a lot better to start with an initial guess based on fully turbulent. So please keep that in mind, the fully turbulent flow assumption and what it means. So we're going to go through an iteration process today, and after a couple of, iter couple of iterations, we'll converge on a solution. So the problem we're trying to solve is what direction is the water flowing and at what flow rate, how much through each pipe, and then, just for fun, we can also calculate the pressure at the junction, D, if we know its elevation. So that's what we're going to do through an example we work with that template file that's on Blackboard. Now, our process is that we're going to, we know water goes out of the highest reservoir into the lowest reservoir, but that middle reservoir we're not so sure about. So. How much the flow rate is going to be depends on the driving force. It's the difference in head between the origin and the destination. So we can use that as a general rule in the same way where we have a horizontal pipe. It's the change in pressure, the difference in energy between two points that's driving the flow. If you have a big pressure drop, the flow rate will go quickly. If you have a low pressure drop, then the flow rate is more modest. So we use the darcy Wiesbach equation to estimate the head loss, but the velocity is unknown. The friction factor is a function of the velocity. So um, a big part of our process today when we're solving things is using the continuity equation. Anybody rem remember what I mean by the continuity equation? I use that phrase a couple of times in fluid mechanics. What is continuity equation? I'll give you a hint. It won't be a helpful hint. It was in chapter 5 that we talked about the continuity equation. Is chapter that, is that flow in equals flow out? Flow in equals flow out. Very good. And I heard someone else was going to jump in there too. So think about junction D. So what would continuity applied to junction D? It's just we got to make sure that flow in and flow out is balanced. So let's say, for example, the water's going from A towards D. So then what we would say is we would say if the water is going from A to D, we'd say QBD plus QAD equals QDC. So the flow into junction D equals the flow out of junction D. That's another tool in our arsenal. We've got some tools we're going to use and continuity is an important one today. So that's the foundation. Everybody understand what the problem is, why it's a problem, what the tricks are going to be, how we're going to start with a guess of the F value. We're going to check 
to know if we're converged, like our convergence criteria is, is the F value stabilized? Does flow in equal flow out? If those are all thumbs ups, then we'll know we may have a correct solution. That's what we're going to be looking for. This is an iterative process. We're going to use this definition of head, our head loss due to pipe friction is the darcy Wiesbach method. Now, the head at D is how much head there is at A minus the head loss. So this formula here presumes that the water is going from A towards D. So this minus sign, this is really important, this part. The head at D is however much head there is at A. Remember, head is energy. The energy at D is the energy at A minus the losses. And it's a minus because of the direction of flow. Now think about why is there a plus here? Plus. Okay, so the head at D is the head at C plus the head loss. So why was it a plus for this one but a minus for that one? Well, it's because of flow direction. Going from D to A, we're going against the flow. So that's why it's minus, is there's going to be less energy at D than there was at A. But there's more energy at D than there is at C. So the head at D is however much energy there is at C plus the energy loss due to pipe friction. So you need to be able to have, you know, see a new problem and come up with these on your own. These won't always be given, these uh, you know, head relationships. So we're going to start by guessing a head at D. And based on the guess, we'll find the uh, head loss in terms of F and V. We're going to assume an F value for the first one. Or for subsequent iterations, we'll update based on the most recently calculated F value. And we'll find out what is the velocity. Then we're going to calculate the Reynolds number for the velocity based on our formula for Reynolds number. Then with this Reynolds number and velocity, we can calculate the friction factor with the Jane equation rather than starting with an assumption. And then we're going to calculate the flow rate through the pipe using the continuity equation. And then we're going to balance the in versus the out at junction D. This is the process that's built into the format of the template. I made the template after reading through the book. And the book kind of explained the calculation procedure. And so in my mind, I thought, OK, how would, what order would we need to calculate things on a spreadsheet? So I came up with a template based on the procedure that's described in the book. Now, we know that our guess was too high if the flow out is greater than the flow in. So that would mean for subsequent iterations, we need to lower our guess of H sub D. But if Q out is greater than Q in, then that means we need to raise our guess of, a, of H sub D. So we're going to kind of keep this at the ready. If you've got your notes printed out, it'll be useful to have the notes on one side and the spreadsheet on the other when it comes to this if-then. We may refer back to this slide to help us diagnose whether we need to raise or lower the guess for H sub D. And eventually, we're going to get to the point where our flow out and flow in are balanced. And as long as our F values are converged, once we have achieved balance and continuity, then that means that the problem is done because we've achieved convergence. Boy, this sure sounds complicated, but it's really not. You're going to get the hang of it quick. OK, so here's the particulars. Three reservoirs. We've got the elevations. We know the lengths of the pipes. We know what it's made out of. Here's one that's cast iron, another one that's cast iron, and one that's galvanized iron. We've got the diameters. So we're just going to solve this three reservoirs problem and find out what's the flow rate through each pipe. And then what's the pressure at D? Those are the things we're going to solve. Our kinematic viscosity of water in traditional units is provided. And the physical elevation at junction D is 85 feet. We'll need this to calculate the pressure. 
you don't need the physical elevation at D if you're not calculating the pressure. We could find the flow rate at D without knowing its physical elevation. But to calculate the pressure, we have to know the physical elevation. So here's our procedure again. Let's open up that template file. All right. Here it is. We've got the diagram. We've got the Jane equation. Look at how I've rearranged the head loss equation to solve for velocity. We're going to use that when we're calculating the velocity based on a known head loss. Here's the kinematic viscosity of water and traditional units. OK. So our three lines, there's line AD, there's line BD, and line DC. OK, so if you're following along, key all that in. Uh, the material, it's uh, cast iron for AD and BD. And then pipe DC is galvanized iron. And the reason why we need to distinguish between them is that they have different K sub S values. The K sub S for the cast iron is 0 0.00085. So I'll drag that down to the next one as well. And then galvanized iron is a little bit more smooth. It's 0 0.00050. Okay. The lengths of the pipes we can get from the diagram there, 750 for AD, 1,000 for pipe BD, and 500 for DC. Just filling in this given data here, 12 inches is the diameter for BD, 8 inches for AD, and 8 inches for DC. So we'll put in the diameter. You'll notice it's in units of feet. So. That is 8 twelves for pipe AD, 1 foot diameter for BD, and 8 twelfths of a foot for pipe DC. How are we going to calculate area? Pi D squared divided by 4. Okay, so pi, pi, open, close parentheses, times the diameter, squared, and then divide by 4. Okay, so we can drag that area formula down. Okay, now, our guess, this is the first part where we're actually, we're in step 1. You can see across the top there, I've got the steps labeled. So step one, uh, we have to make an assumption about what is the head at D. Our book suggests to suggest, uh, it suggests to assume that the, the head at D is equal to the elevation of the middle pipe, uh, oh, excuse me, the middle reservoir. But I think it's a little bit better to not make it that. Uh, Things will make more sense if we assume that it's just like one foot higher or lower rather than assuming the same. So I'm going to suggest, let's start with a guess of 111 feet as our guess head at D. And so these other ones, I'm just going to say equals and refer to the cell above it. Rather than type that in three times, I'm just using this as a relative reference of the cell above it. All right. So if this is the head, then what is the head loss through the pipe? Um, now, we're not calculating this with the Darcy Wiesbach equation. This is where, where we're applying these formulas. Okay, so what that means is okay, so if the head is 111 at D, then the head loss through the pipe is 120 minus 111. That would say that there is. 9 feet of head loss, right? So I'll say the head loss through the pipe is the water surface elevation at A, 120, minus that. Hmm, AD. No, no, I'm sorry. Here is pipe A. Uh, here is reservoir A. I was looking at the wrong one. So AD isn't 9. It's 
Okay, so what's the head loss if, if there's 111 here? So it would be 111 minus 110. So if we're assuming that it's 111 is the head at D, then that means we're assuming the water goes from D towards A because there's more energy at D than at A. Okay, so it would be 111 minus the elevation of the water at A, which is 110. There we go. That's more like it. Okay, now BD, 120 minus our guess. And then if there's 70 at C and 111 at D, then it's going to be 111 minus 70. Okay, so we've got all of our head losses based on the guess. So this is still step one because all this is based on what is our guess of how much energy there is at D. All right, so what was step two? Because it's not on the spreadsheet. Find equations for head loss in terms of F and V. All right, well, here they are. Here's the equations of head loss in terms of F and V. I think in your uh, homework on problem three, I ask you to use the Hazen-Williams equation for problem three. So the Hazen-Williams equation is also available. You can have a, uh, a formula that's based on velocity and head loss. But we're using the darcy Wiesbach, so this is the one we're going to use. Okay, so step three. What would be the, uh, the F value? Well, we have to start with a guess right now because you'll notice that we don't know what is the, uh, the V, and so we can't start with a calculation of the F value. So let's just pick somewhere in the middle, 0.02 as the F value for these pipes. Okay, so if it's 0.02, then what would be the velocity? This is where now we're going to use this formula. So it is the square root, you see the square root symbol there, of the H sub F times the diameter times 2 times G divided by the F value. Now, my formula is going to, I can't click on the location because the formula is over the cell. So I'll just type in I27. That's where the F value is. Times the length of the pipe. Okay, so I have just solved for the velocity based on our guess H sub F and based on our guess F value. Boy, there's two guesses. Oh, thank you. Yes, it should. What an amateur mistake, mistake that is. 32.2. Thank you. Okay, mm, what did I forget? Oh, I'm missing a uh, clothes parentheses here at the end because we had the square root going on. All right, so 1.69 is the velocity if the head at D is 111 and if the F value is 0.02. You know, both of those things are going to be changed, so that's not the actual velocity, but it's based on a guess. You can drag the formula down to the other two pipes. And now we're going to calculate a Reynolds number based on that velocity, based on the pipe diameter, based on this kinematic viscosity. So uh, Reynolds number is velocity times the diameter divided by the kinematic viscosity. Um, 1.22 e minus 5. Okay. I can drag that formula down. Now that I have a velocity and a Reynolds number, I'm going to use the Jane equation to calculate an updated F value. That's step six, is update your F value and then update your velocity. Okay, so let's type in the Jane equation. We only have to do it once, fortunately. 1.325 divided by parentheses, the natural log parentheses of K sub S 
make sure it's in units of feet, so it is, that's good. Divided by 3.7 times D. So we've got the first part of the Jane equation. This is the relative roughness term. Now we're going to add in the flow condition term. So 5.74 divided by the Reynolds number. Oh, once again, my formula is in the way. I can't click on the cell, so I have to type it in. K27 to the power of 0.9. And then all of that is squared after I close the parentheses. Boy, in the back, you probably can't see any of that formula from the back, right? We need to start bringing a mic uh, <laughs> binoculars. You can see it? Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, if you can't see what I've typed in, at least you can see the formula. So here's our, let's see, our initial guess of F value is 0.02, our updated guess based on the uh, Jane equation. We're okay, it's relatively close, you know. Let's drag this down to the other pipes. And now we can update our calculation of velocity again. So it is the square root of h sub f times d times 2 times g. And of course, g is 32.2 divided by f, and we mean this updated f value that we just barely calculated. So that's the one that's in cell L27. Okay. Times the pipe length. And then close that parentheses and the other one for the square root. Okay, so this is giving us an updated adjusted velocity. Our initial guess was 1.69. This updated velocity is 1.56. We can drag it down through the other pipes. Boy, the water's really moving fast through pipe DC. Look at that. 13.63 feet per second. That's fast. Now that's just all based on a guess of how much head there is at D. We're going to have to adjust our guess. Now, Let's think about what this means about flow direction. So compared to the junction, is the water flowing into the junction or out of the junction through the pipe? Okay, so pipe BD. That one's obvious. The water is flowing into the junction through pipe BD. So into the junction from BD. Okay, what about... Uh, Pipe AD, is the water going into the junction or out? Well, if the head is 111, so our initial guess, see this arrow? If the head is 111, we're saying that the water is going this way for this first round of iterations. So it's the water is out of junction for pipe AD, and it's also out of the junction towards reservoir C. The flow rate is the velocity times the area. So velocity times the area gives us the flow rate for each pipe. And then down here at the bottom is where we're going to do the flow in minus the flow out. Oh, so I guess here I'm suggesting out minus in. We're looking for the difference for continuity. So let's have equals this outflow plus this outflow minus the inflow. So the sum of the out minus the inflow. So how much error do we have in continuity right now? It's 1.05 cubic feet per second. So back to this slide, if the flow out is greater than the flow in, that means that your initial guess was too high and you should lower it. So look what this is saying. This is saying that for the guess that we have, if the head is 111, then you'd have 
a lot of flow going out, but not very much flow going into the junction. And that doesn't work. That's not what it's going to be. That just is an indication that our guess was too high. So we're going to start with a lower guess. In the next round, we're going to start a guess of 109 feet, a lower guess of the head loss, uh, of the head at, at D. Okay, so any questions so far on this first junction? I'm going to pause for a second, circulate around, and if you have a So why is the water going from D towards A in this first iteration? It's because our first iteration said, let's just say, as a hypothetical, that there's 111 feet of energy at D. So if there's 111 feet at D, then the water is going to go from D towards A, because the water elevation at A is only 110. So the water will go from where it's 111 towards where it's 110. So that's why the flow AD is out of the junction, is because of what our initial guess was. Okay, in the next iteration, we can, get, we can copy all of this stuff. We don't have to type that in again. So just highlight that and copy it. So copy and paste. That's nice. And our initial guess was too high because out minus in was positive. So let's use a lower guess. How much lower? I don't know, 50 feet. Let's just use 109, see where that takes us. 109 feet. And then I'll just have all of them is based on the guess of 109. I think what we're going to be able to do is except for this head loss through the pipe, we'll be able to copy and paste a lot of the formulas. But we can't just copy and paste this one because the flow direction is going to be different for AD. If, now, that, remember, iteration two, we're saying, iteration one was saying it's a 111. But iteration two is saying the head at D is 109. If the head at D is 109, this arrow changes direction. It's uh, the flow direction is this if the head is 109 because the water would go from where it's 110 towards where it's 109. So this is all saying, what if the head is 109? So then the head loss would be, um, for AD, it would be 110 minus that. For BD, it's 120 minus the elevation at the head at D. And then DC is the guess of 109 minus the water elevation of 70. OK. So this is like if the water, if the head of the water at D is 109, then this is how much head loss there's going to be through the pipes. OK, now we're not going to do a guess for this iteration. Uh, let's erase that word guess, because it, it's actually the F value from the previous step. So let's have it be referencing these F values from the previous iteration. Instead of starting over with just a completely new guess, we can do better than that. Let's use the most recently calculated F value. OK, and drag that down. So that's better than starting from scratch with 0.2 again, 0.02. OK, let's see, on this velocity, I think we're going to be able to just copy and paste this formula for velocity. So copy the whole thing for velocity, Control C, Control V, all right. So we've got a new set of velocities. Uh, Reynolds number, we can copy, control C and paste, control V. All right, great. We've got newly updated Reynolds number. This F value is where we calculate it. It's like our updated F value based on the Jane equation. And once again, we can just copy and paste the F value. And it gives us the change is more subtle this time. You know, last time there was a relatively big jump for pipe AD, smaller. 
in the second iteration. That's a good sign that the F values aren't changing as much. I like that. Let's copy and paste these velocities because the velocity is just based on the uh, this formula again, the rearranged darcy Wiesbach equation. So we can copy and paste that. Now this flow direction thing, we have to diagnose manually. All right. So if the head is 109, then it's flowing from A towards D. So it's in for AD. In BD, the water is flowing in from B towards D. So it's into the junction. And then it's flowing out of the junction towards C. So DC is out. Okay, flow rate is just Q times A, so I'm going to copy and paste again. Control C, Control V. Hmm. Oh, I missed one. Okay, and then we're going to add up the outflows minus the inflow. So equals the outflow minus both of the inflows. Okay, since that's negative, look at this rule. If Q out is greater than Q in, then raise the guess of H sub D. So it's negative, which means that our guess for H sub D was too low. So we'll raise it. We'll try 109.5 for this next one. But we're getting closer, right? The error was bigger in our last iteration. The error is getting smaller now. Okay, so... Let's do this, wild and crazy. Highlight all of it for this next copy-paste. Highlight all of it. Okay, and copy, and then paste it into the appropriate spot for iteration three, just paste. Okay, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the H sub D. Instead of 109, let's try 109.5. Ooh, that's looking better. Look, the error is smaller than it was before. Why couldn't we just change it here? Well, it's because we're still iterating the F value a little bit. So once the F value is good and stable, then we could change the H sub D within the iteration. But until the F value has stabilized, it's better if we don't. It's not changing much for two of the pipes. Look, DC, the F value guess, and the output F value is the same. Also for BD. But pipe AD, there's still a subtle change. It's pretty small, the change in F value. So we're in the iteration four, I think we're going to get pretty good. Okay, but look, it's too, it's negative, which means we need to raise it again. So what's the conclusion? Again, the conclusion is our guess for HD is too low. Raise it. Uh, let's split the difference again. Let's say um, 109.75. And so again, copy everything. Control C, Control V to paste. And instead of 109.5, let's do uh, 109.75. Okay, that's pretty small. Now look, let's look at what's going on with the F value. Not a lot of change. Let's use what if analysis to get us the rest of the way there. Goal seek. Um, so you may remember what we want is we want, our goal is for this to be zero. And so we're gonna tell it change this until the difference is zero. Okay, so I'm gonna go here to the data tab, data, what if analysis, goal seek. Okay, so set this cell to a value of zero by changing this guess of H sub D. And, and luckily I have the other elevations that are referencing this original. So when it changes this one, it's also gonna update the other ones too. So go. Okay, looks like, boy, for a second there I was worried it wasn't going to converge. It was spazzing all over the place.
but it got there in the end. So it's saying it suggests that the elevation for the head at D is 109.879. And uh, uh, I mean, if I was really feeling picky, I'd maybe go for an iteration 5 so that the F value wasn't changing anymore. But just for simplicity, we've only got four minutes left. Um, Let's leave it here for today, and we'll calculate the pressure at junction D when we gather on Friday. Are there any questions about this spreadsheet? If you have an individual, like a problem on your spreadsheet, and you want me to help you uh, find the error, let me know. We've I've got a few minutes after class, or you can bring it up on Teams. We can do the screen sharing thing. <laughs>